Hello and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa here with Jill Duffy and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to cover the top tech news of the day. We're going to answer one of your reader questions and then we're going to get to a cool thing from the lab. Let's start with the big news of the day, which is good news in the global battle for net neutrality. And that's that the European Union is actually taking a stand in favor of net neutrality and is going to protect users' access to the internet. Yeah, the vote was kind of astounding. It was 520-something to like 30-something, um, a complete landslide vote. And nice to see this happening in the, in, in the European Union. I in mean, the, it's not really happening here in the United States. Not but at it's, all. It's really an issue, I think, of equal access. Um, so keeping the internet open for people to use, not throttling different speeds to provide um, preferred service for some Websites, yeah. things like that. Which a lot of the streaming services are now in the U.S. having to cut deals with cable operators in order to provide that premium service. Apple's been talking to Comcast. Uh, Netflix has been talking to Comcast. You know, this is basically an entirely new model. And if, if we can yeah. follow in the Europeans' footsteps here, it could be a huge thing for net neutrality. Well, you know, for Americans, I think there's a real emphasis on business and the kinds of profits that businesses can make. So imagine if you had an internet package where you could say, I only want access to these 10 sites and I'll pay a certain fee for just that. Um, it's a little bit frightening for me because I think that part of the beauty of the internet is this open access for all. Um, but I think that certain companies would definitely want to have those kinds of packages where they could have deals with different mm -hmm. businesses and website owners, um, sort of sell out those services in, in different packaged ways. Uh, so I like that the European Union is taking a stand on this. Yeah, indeed. Also in the news today, also in the business area, Greenpe Greenpeace released its annual report on which tech companies are using green energy. We're talking, of course, about their data centers. The internet does not run for free. It runs on oil, it runs on gas, it runs on nuclear power. And they ranked all of the different data centers and big tech companies. And there were some surprises about who's green and who's not. Yeah, so I think Apple was the one who got some nice um, highlights there. They are doing a good job, I guess. They're trying to keep their act clean, as it were. Which is um, a big difference from two years ago when Greenpeace totally slammed them. In two years, they've really turned over a new leaf. Yeah, they've had to. The spotlight was on them yeah. pretty rough, um, especially with a lot of their production in China. Uh, and then Amazon, of course, is the one who got slammed this year. So dirty energy, dirty production, I guess, is, is what uh, Greenpeace said about Amazon. Yeah, because they use a lot of coal-powered factories, nuclear power. It's not the, the green energy sources that, uh, that Apple, Google, and Facebook have been migrating to. The other problem with Amazon is they're not transparent. And I would say this not only about their energy usage, but also about their finances. Um, Amazon is really good at sort of covering up and keeping a lot of blurred lines between what different departments are making their money and how they're using their energy. So Greenpeace definitely said that was a big problem with transparency. Yeah. And, and the scale of it, also Amazon's one of the largest providers of data services. Amazon AWS runs Netflix. Netflix is 31% of global internet traffic. Yeah. So that, that is a, it's hugely consequential, consequential where they get their energy sources right. from. Right, exactly. So Tesla continues to be the highest tech car on the road and Tesla is now signed onto a petition to replace the side view mirrors in cars with cameras. Yeah, this is coming about because there's been a change where it's now going to be a requirement to have a rear view camera um, and it helps people back up. It's a really nice um, invention, I think, that we've had for years and years and years, but it's finally becoming a law. Um, so Tesla is going to take on this battle to get rid of side view mirrors and put them also as cameras. I mean, the bonus, the benefit being you're going to get a much more aerodynamic vehicle, which is going to F save on fuel, improve fuel economy, but it, does it seem strange? I kind of like what happens when the mirror, when the the camera malfunctions or it gets fogged up. I mean, right now you just reach out the window and clean it off. I mean, I I, I feel like I'm going to miss the mirror somehow. Yeah, maybe. I think it's more important though to say that Tesla is fighting this battle because the change in that industry takes forever. The change for laws to be um, updated takes forever. So they are dedicated to this fight. They're going to go for it. And um, nice to see somebody doing that. Yeah, it's a good, you know what? It's a good conversation to have. We shouldn't be bound by the rules of the past when we have these new technologies that could open up new opportunities. Absolutely. So now we've got to our reader question. We take our reader questions on YouTube in the comments section. We can also take questions by Facebook or Twitter. Today, the question we're getting, there's a lot of buzz about wearable computing devices. Everybody wants to know, do I buy something now? Should I wait? Is the next great thing going to come out next week and I'm going to kick myself? And more specifically, fitness trackers. Fitness so I trackers. got three or four of virtually the same email asking, what's the best? 
Which one should I buy or should I wait for something new? And my thought on it, and you're a big fitness tracker user too. Mm. So my thought on it is really that it depends a lot on what it is you're trying to do. If you are a super sports enthusiast, you probably want a runner's watch. If you swim, you might want the TomTom Multisport, which is a watch that supports swimming, bicycling, and running. Um, the Misfit Shine is good for swimming. If you want heart rate, the, beat, the, the basis Carbon Steel Edition is my favorite one. That's the one that looks like a watch. You wear it on your wrist. It takes your heart rate all day long. Um, and the Fitbit One is also another one that I, I've loved for a long time. It's inexpensive. It's $99. Coming out soon, a little bit later this year, is the Wellograph. So if you're going to wait for something high end, I would wait for the Wellograph. It's going to sell for $350. Ooh. But in most other ways, it's similar to the basis. Um, it has a few extra features like GPS. And then the Samsung Gear Fit is also coming out pretty soon. Um, you'll need a Samsung specific phone to use that. So it's more of an accessory to the phone than it is a universal fitness tracker. But those are the two that are sort of like hot on my list of things coming out soon. But uh, it, the, my problem with these trackers is that all the data usually resides in different places. They don't all talk to each other. It's hard to sort of collate it. You go with one platform, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. Yeah, I think Fitbit is one of the better um, companies that is addressing that by having lots of apps that connect to lots of different things. Actually, the Jawbone Up24 is pretty good for that too. Very cool. Now it's time for one cool thing. We test thousands of products every year here at PC Mag Labs in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. This thing just got to the labs yesterday. We talked about it on yesterday's show. It is, of course, the Amazon Fire TV. We've got the TV here. Jill's going to show you the box itself. The box itself looks like any other set-top box with an array of ports on the back. It's got Ethernet, which is nice because you can get a nice high-speed wired connection if you have a wired connection. Of course, it's got built-in Wi-Fi as well. But it, it, it's a streaming box. It'll help you stream all of your Amazon movies. It supports Netflix. It supports games, which is kind of unusual in a gaming box because it's got a fast processor. This is actually much faster hardware than you'll find in the Apple TV or in the Roku. Um, but just a great overall package and, and sort of became our editor's choice for set-top boxes overnight, literally overnight. What's the selling price on this? It's a hundred bucks. It's pretty good. It's, a, it's yeah. pretty good. It's Apple TV priced. It's, um, and the, the voice activation and voice searching actually works, which <laughs> doesn't always, isn't always the case. Yeah. So that was a pleasant surprise. You can read Will Greenwald's full review on the, Apple, on the, uh, on the Amazon Fire TV on PCMag.com right now. And that's been PCMag Live. Tune in tomorrow for a brand new show. Jill, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.